Thank you for joining us this week for Worship From Home. My name is Chris Carver. And I'm Holly Carver. We want to do, uh, just welcome you to the service this week. Um, we've been members of Galilee now for about three years. Mm -hmm. And we joined the Galilee family um, to kind of provide a little continuity for our daughter who was going to St. Paul's Lutheran School at that time. And uh, since then, we've, you know, we're kind of staples of the church family now. And we, we enjoy loving, we love and enjoy seeing you guys. If you want to join along in this week's worship, join along in your Lutheran service book on page 260. And then if you have the, uh, the email from Pastor Matt, you can follow along with the PDF in there as well. One quick thing I forgot to mention while we were outside recording today. If you would like to be a part of our Worship at Home service, you can email Pastor Matt at the email address that will be put right below my chin. Thanks for joining us again this week. We're going to pass it along now to the Galilee singers who are going to open us up in hymn. Hit it. <laughs> Continue then with our opening versicles. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the, the name of the Lord, Lord is to be praised. praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. is 
my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for He has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing. strength and my song, for he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now. strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 to 22. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God and walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? and to keep his commandments of statues of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold to the Lord your God, belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose offspring after them. You above all peoples, as are they this day circumcised, therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn, for the Lord your God of God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice in fatherness and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore you were sojourners. In the land of Egypt, you shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. And by his name you shall swear, he is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt seven, seventhly persons. And now the Lord your God has made you as numerous of the stars of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight's second reading is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 46. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the, a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And he said to him, The son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, in the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good evening. Our catechism readings tonight are from the first commandment and the introduction and the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. 
The first is the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Next is the introduction of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children ask their dear father. The first petition of the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name. What does this mean? God's name is certainly holy in itself, but we pray in this petition that it may be kept holy among us also. And how is God's name kept holy? God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as children of God lead holy lives also according to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. But anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God among us. Protect us from this Heavenly Father. Have a great night. Thanks, Chris. Thank you to Holly and to Jordan for joining me for this week's service. It's truly a blessing to have a family who not only supports my devotion to the flock at Galilee, but they themselves are also devoted to caring for our church family as well. Thank you to Pastor Matt for sharing Martin Luther's teaching on the First Commandment and the intro to the first petition in the Lord's Prayer, plus all of their meanings. And last but not least, thanks to Mr. Rob, Mr. Wade, Miss Jan, and Miss Melissa, the Galilee singers, for the beautiful hymns. They are always just something else. But before we dive into tonight's message, let's join together in a brief time of prayer. Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert those not yet your own, and to confirm those who have come to the saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lips, and from the lips to the life that, as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ah, dear saints, warms my heart to say that. This week, we have one of my favorite written texts in the whole of the Bible. This is the text that I would get giddy hearing as a kid, and I, I never really understood why. Um, it wasn't until I got much older and became much older that I really am matured that I started to study the Word, and I came to understand the significance of this short little section of the Bible. When it came time to look at the lectionary, and I noticed this reading was the story of the, the great commandment. Well, I, I got giddy again. And growing up in, in the Catholic faith, we didn't know which readings were coming at us, so it was kind of interesting. So t tonight's reading, though, it begins with Jesus meeting the Pharisees yet again after they found out that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. Now, we hear these two groups often in the Gospel, so we kind of need to take a moment to look at the fracturing that had occurred in Judaism at the time. First, the Pharisees. Think of them as the forefathers of modern-day Judaism. They claimed they were the keepers of the Mosaic Law, not only in writing, but also in oral interpretation, in a collection of writings called the Talmud. Meanwhile, the Sadducees, the elite, the priests, the aristocrats, they rejected the oral law, that Mosaic interpretation that the Pharisees clung to, and insisted on a very strict literal interpretation of the written law of the Torah. There are other groups that we can get into tonight, but we're just going to focus on these two. Another key separator between these two groups, the Pharisees, they believed in life after death, while the Sadducees did not, since it, it's not explicitly mentioned in the Torah. There are other differences, but we're just going to leave it at that, that for now. So the Pharisees, they had their lawyers with them tonight. And those who would, those are the guys who would always uh, provide some guidance and consult on the oral interpretation of the Mosaic Law. Think of them as maybe modern day biblical scholars or professors. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Now, here we go again this week with testing Jesus again. Always testing him, trying to catch Jesus up in professing something they could deem a mistake or a heresy. The testing was ongoing throughout Jesus' ministry. The lawyer asks in verse 36, Teacher, 
which is the greatest commandment in the law. And the next part is why I get so giddy when I read or when I hear this text. And tonight I even get to, to study it a little bit more in depth. So Jesus pulls absolutely no punches with his response. And he said to him that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with your soul, all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest command. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So let's take a moment to look at these two commandments, if you will. They don't match verbatim many of the Ten Commandments that are given to us back in the book of Deuteronomy or in Exodus. Um, they are mentioned in tonight's first reading from Deuteronomy, but um, yeah. Loving the Lord our God requires us to do a few things. First, we shall not put any other God, that's little g, before the living God and the creator of all of this that you see behind me and in front of you. Second, we aren't to make any carved images or idols of him, nor do we bow down to them. Third, we don't take his name in vain, or we shall not be held guiltless, which isn't good for us come judgment day. And last, fourth and last, we are to observe the Sabbath, if you remember Shabbat from last week. In summary, in order to love the Lord our God with all our human hearts, our human souls, and our human minds, we have to follow commandments one through four. And the next part of Jesus' answer, he tells us that in the second, the second commandment is like the first. Sorry, I got a little bugs flying around me. We shall love our neighbor as ourselves. Again, there is no commandment that expressly says this. This commandment that Jesus gives us tells us that we are to honor our fathers and our mothers. We don't kill each other. We don't commit adultery. We don't steal. We don't bear false witnesses against our neighbors. And we don't cover our neighbors their family, their belongings, or their servants. None of these are neighborly activities, to be honest with you. So to love our neighbors as ourselves, Jesus says, do none of these. So which is the greatest commandment we are to follow? Ask the lawyer, the professor of the law. Well, good news, fella. It's all of them. Jesus says the greatest commandment is basically commandment 1 through 4 followed equally and closely by 5 through 10. And just in case the lawyer missed Jesus' dissertation on which laws crafted by the hand of the living God, the Father himself, on a tablet of stone given to Moses for us to follow, Jesus concludes his legal class with, on these two commandments, which is all the Ten Commandments, depend all the law and the prophets. These commandments are binding, they are the binding moral code by which we are to live. Jesus wasn't done teaching the teachers and the rabbis. Now when the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, what do you think about the Christ? Who, whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. Now, this is where the history of biblical times becomes very, very important. Let's kind of take a big step back for a moment to examine the context of why Jesus' answer is so important. And I'm going to jump around a lot tonight, and I apologize, Pastor Matt, this is just how my ADHD brain works. So to open both the Gospels, the Good News, the Evangelion of Matthew and Luke, we're presented with two genealogies. Matthew provides us a genealogy of Joseph, who was Jesus' father, and Luke presents us husband of Mary, and then Luke presents us in his gospel the, ge the genealogy of Mary in the third chapter of his writing. So both Mary and Joseph's lineages lead back to David, but through two different sons. And why is Mary's lineage important? Well, according to the law, of the time, if no male heir was born to a father, he could pass the inheritance along to his daughter. So if she married within her tribe, that's the key. So since no record exists of Mary having a brother, she would be the rightful heir to inherit the lineage. So we also know why Mary was you know, we, we know that Mary was a virgin, fulfilling one of the many prophecies related to the birth of Christ. And Real quickly, last point, then we'll get back to the text. One of David's descendants, 
Jeconiah, also just known as Coniah in some of the writings, um, he was cursed by God and set so that for none of his offspring shall succeed sitting on the throne of David. Well, the importance of the lineage is that Jesus, rightful, uh, he is the rightful heir of David, son of God the Father, almighty begotten by the Holy Spirit. Joseph's line comes from Jeconiah. That's why you're presented with both. Now, I know that's a lot of information I gave you. Please go back and rewatch it. If you have any questions, let me know. But um, I just want to give you some context around how Jesus is a descendant of David and why that was their answer. So, but now Jesus is going to take the reply given by the Pharisees, and he's going to toss a great reply to them. And he said to them, How is it then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my son, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he son? Jesus uses this text, this very text that opens Psalm 110, to show that David understands the divinity of his living God. And even though he's a Lord, there is a Lord, capital L, greater than he. That Lord will sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, the place that has been rightfully reserved for Jesus Christ in the kingdom of heaven. Theologians, scholars, and the like have come up with some pretty intense sermons and answers regarding this scenario that I presented, but that took centuries of study and discernment by many, many men. What the Pharisees have, what did the Pharisees have to say in that moment when Jesus presents this question to them? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. The Pharisees, they have been trying to play the same tired game with Jesus for almost three years at this point. The Christ had defeated them at every turn as we conclude tonight's reading. And we learned that no one asked any more questions of Jesus. No more trying to catch him in that gotcha moment. They were defeated. Jesus shows us here in tonight's text that he was an authoritative master of the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus evades being caught in some sort of paradox of what the word of the Old Testament teaches about the commandments, as well as using David's words himself to show that the Christ would be both human and divine and earn that spot in the, throne, in the right hand of God the Father. As followers of Jesus Christ, we know that this is the case where the Pharisees were full of doubt about this teacher. Their pride and their desire to live in the moment, to live in the world, controlled their very being all while refusing to try to ref all while refusing and trying to refute the teachings of Jesus. They control that their control ultimately turns them into creatures who are willing to murder Jesus Christ because of his teachings and they were not his, their teachings they would fabricate charges against this man capture him with an armed militia turn him over to the governor of Jerusalem to be sacrificed and while they believed they were ending a man's life to wipe away the scourge that this man had become to their status in life they had no idea what was about to happen and what they were about to unleash Christ Jesus also teaches us tonight that he is not only human, but he points to his divinity, being a rightful heir to the throne of David. Many people, including Muslims and Jews themselves, accept that Jesus lived and died, but only as a prophet. Only believers in Jesus Christ, being the true Son of God, understand that even though his human body was killed, he raised himself from the dead on that third day. He did this as a sacrifice for all of our human sins, those same types of sins that blinded the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other groups, so that we, we may gain our righteousness in the eyes of the living God. In Christ's precious name we pray, Amen. Have a blessed evening.
please join with us in the prayers for this day. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those who work in is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in our church family and our homes, as well as those who are scattered abroad in need of our prayers and petitions on this day, that we now lift up to you, Lord, in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank, thank you, you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Conclude with the blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful evening and may peace be with you.
Hello, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Welcome to Find the Flags. I don't have a flag. <sighs> Oops. Hey. Thank you for uh, joining us this week for our, our worship at home. My name's Chris Carver. Right? Oh, it is right. Oh, geez. I gotta remember what I chose here. I put together a service and I don't even remember it. Gotta start over now. So. You all right? 